so hard. Judy, I believe there is a venerable saying to the effect that we should be thankful to have the work to do or something. <laughs> you mind if I sit down and watch? I'll be honored. Mr. Yen, you haven't had your dinner yet. I bet it's some ancient Chinese dish. The ancient Chinese dish is corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> I hope you take pity on an old man's loneliness and share it with me. I will be honored, but that's not what I came in for. Judy, I do hope your visit is not in connection with the lovable American custom of the touch. Because if you press that 12 or no sale lever on that instrument of business, you will find it contains only $4.18. And I might add that your lovely smile and soft eyes do not touch this flinty heart. I shall keep my four dollars and eighteen cents. Very well, you convinced me. You may take the four dollars and eighteen cents. <laughs> oh, Mr. Yen, I love you. And I knew you'd offer me the money, but that's not what I came in for either. Well, you wish me to join the fabled cat in curiosity's grave, or will you eventually confess it all? Well, I want... Mr. Yen, I wish to be married. I wish to be married tonight at 11 o'clock, right here. Well? Well, are you serious? Why, Mr. Yen, of course. Trudy, I seldom am at loss for words, but you have cherished this idea for so many years, and I presume you have a young man in mind this time. Why, Dick Forsyth, of course. Oh, yes, the young looking war from out of the West. Then there really is such a man? Why, Mr. Yen, what do you mean? Oh, I am sorry, Trudy. You must forgive an old man whose mind works very slowly. Of course, you may be married here. Although I hear people speak well of churches as marriage sites. Mr. Yen, this has always been a, a sort of home to me, and this is where I want to get married. And Oh, Mr. Yen... I wish for you to give me in marriage and take the place of my father. I have never had a child. I feel unworthy, but I am honored. My wedding feast is unworthy too. One small pot of corned beef and cabbage for a hungry young knight in shining armor. Mr. Yen, young men in love eat very little, and young girls eat practically nothing at all. Judy, I don't think you told me where the kingdom of this young prince is. Oh, now, don't tease me. And besides, we haven't much time. I ought to tidy things up a bit. I thought I'd put the altar over here. Through this, there is a small technical matter of a license. Oh, that? We've had that for oh, ever so long. Trudy, I think a minister is nice. Oh, so do I. I thought I'd ask the Reverend Tuttle. Oh, Mr. Kelly, I, I was wishing you'd come in. Hello, Trudy. Why? You look like the canary that just swallowed the cat. Oh, it's a wonderful night. Oh, I don't know. It's just like every other night. I captured no dangerous criminals. I won no rewards. Did nothing to become famous. <laughs> the night's not over yet. It is for me. I'm going home. Oh, Mr. Kelly, please, wait a minute. I wish for you to be best man at my wedding. What was that again? Trudy is going to be married tonight. Right here, she wants you to be the best man. Well, I... I guess so. <laughs> Do you have a bridegroom in mind? And he's perfect. Oh, come now. No man is perfect. What's his name? Let's see if he's on me list. Why, Dick Forsyth. Dick Fo... You mean there really is such a man? I already have asked that question. There is such a man. He will be here at 11. And there'll be a wedding feast afterwards, thanks to Mr. Yen. I wouldn't dwell on the word feast, Trudy. It's probably some rare Chinese concoction. It does have a familiar smell, though. Well, I had planned it as corned beef and cabbage, but if the guest list continues to grow, it will be corned beef or cabbage. Oh, faith and begot, it should be fair for a dish. Please, Mr. Kelly, will you try not to sound as a policeman? I disapprove of exits. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know? So you're really getting married. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do? Um, I wish for a beautiful wedding dress. Look, every time you want something, you just wish for it? Of course. Well, don't look at me, a wedding dress. Oh, I don't know, Trudy, it's awfully late to get a dress. Now, Trudy, take it easy. I'm a cop, a wedding. And wait now. 
My daughter's graduation dress. Three years and 20 pounds ago, she wasn't any bigger than you. Huh? It's a white cheese cloth. Oh, thing. thank you, Mr. Kelly. Well, well, maybe a little much. Three years in the closet. I can take care of that. Oh, well, then it's all set. Now, what else do we need? Oh, I know. The wedding cake. No. I find it works better to wish for things around the people that can help. Mr. Yen, tell me something. Is this on the level? Why? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Did you ever see this guy? No, me neither. Now, any time she wants something, she says she wishes for it. You don't think that she's... Uh... No, I don't. Good evening, she says. Wakes me up to say good evening. What do you want? Go away. Mr. Beltheimer, I wish for you to give me that cake in the window. It's very important. It is no cake. It is just cardboard. Go away. Idiot. Take it out from my door. The foot. Then, Mr. Beltheimer, I wish for you to make me a cake just like that one. Beltheimer is closed. See him tomorrow. Oh, but I must have the cake tonight. I'm being married at 11 o'clock. You ask me to bake for you a cake tonight? Impossible. There is no time. Take it out from my door. The foot. Oh, but Mr. Bertheimer, you must have another cake like that baked somewhere. You could put the bride and groom on that. Do you? Do I what? Have a cake someplace else. Yes. No, no, it is promised. Anyway, I give no credit. People are no good. No credit. Go away. But, Mr. Bertan, I'm not asking for credit. I'm asking you to give me that cake. Oh, Mr. Bertan, I, I know you really want to be nice to people, but you never get the chance. Well, I'm giving you that chance. Oh, please, give me the cake. And in return, I'm asking you to attend my wedding. Out! The what? Go away! Go away! And then you can tell beautiful stories to the children. They can learn a lot from you. Children? Mm, the ones we're going to have. Three boys and three girls, including the twins. I will launder their little clothes. Oh, but you won't have to do any laundry. You won't have to work at all. After a long visit with us, Dick and I will pay all your expenses back to China for our trip. Oh, we won't even miss the money. Oh, Mr. Kelly. Oh, you've got the dress. Yeah, I hope it's all right. It isn't exactly as I remember it. It's just what I had in mind. Do you think it will fit, Mr. Yen? <laughs> we'll make it fit. And, and you can make it crisp and very pretty, can't you? There's a little doubt I can improve on its appearance. Well, it's beginning to look like a wedding around here. Now all she needs is some flowers. Ah, oh, never mind, never mind. I'll get some flowers. <laughs> Trudy, tell me something. About this Dick Forsythe, is he tall, dark, and handsome? Oh, he's a, he's a little taller than you are, only not quite so. He's got dark, curly hair. Oh, he's handsome. He has a wonderful job, and, and he loves me. What more is there? Hmm? Nothing, I guess, if he shows up. Uh, well, you, you, you know, things happen. Uh, what if he's delayed? Oh, he'll be here. He said he'd be here at 11. He'll be here. The wedding feast. I'll be right back. I suppose you were talking about Mr. Forsythe. Yes. Mr. Yen, this kid is a dreamer. And she could be off a rocker. Now, I got no quarrel with dreaming, providing you don't go goofy about it. Now, look at me. I'm always dreaming about capturing the world's most wanted criminal. But I don't go around telling people that I'm going to capture him tonight at 11 o'clock. Mr. Forsythe will be here. We must have faith. Five bucks says he doesn't show. You wish to wager five dollars? Right. Have you got five dollars with the fat? <laughs> I do not choose to bet. Shh, leave it to me. I'll find out the truth. Mr. Kelly, that was a wonderful idea. I was just going. Ten o'clock. I hope there's a floor is still open. <laughs> 
Now I'd better get Reverend Tuttle. Now, wait a minute, Trudy. Tell me, how did you meet Mr. Forsythe? Why, I just wished it. That's when I learned that wishes could come true. We met and found out right away. Do you have a picture of him? No, I've never had a picture. Trudy, how did you know that he was coming tonight? He told me. I mean, how did he tell you? By a telegram, perhaps? Yes, it was a telegram. Do you happen to have it with you? Well, the landlady just took it over the phone. You believe me, don't you, Mr. Yen? I am sorry, Trudy. Please answer me one question. Would you ever wish for something and then make believe it's going to happen, even when you knew that it wasn't? Of course not, Mr. Yen. Very well, Trudy. I'll believe you. Now you can go. Oh, how about the wedding cake? Oh, that's all taken care of. Mr. Bertheim is giving me a cake for nothing, and he's coming to the wedding. You usually get a $10 bill in the offering, do you, Mr. Tuttle? No, Trudy, no, not often. I bet you can use it all right, though. I'm afraid not. That's counterfeit. Why would somebody put a counterfeit $10 bill into our offering? Well, maybe whoever put it in thought it was real. I certainly wish we had a real one. Then you will have. When you wish for something and it's right, it comes true. It's like a prayer. Prayers are answered, aren't they? Oh, yes, but... We pray to be guided in his way, not for him to grant our wishes. I'm going to get my wish. That's why I'm here. Mr. Tuttle, I want you to perform a wedding tonight at 11. Not for you, Trudy. Mm hmm Well, that's wonderful. Somebody I know. Well, not exactly. Dick Forsythe. Dick? There is such a person. Oh, forgive me, Trudy. I guess I've fallen into a bad habit. I've seen so many persons lately who don't know the meaning of honesty. And yet they all must be helped. Well, if people didn't need to be helped, we wouldn't have the pleasure of helping them. That's why I don't mind asking. It gives them so much fun. Bless you, Trudy. I'm glad you came in. You reaffirm my faith in people. You want the wedding here in the church, huh? No, at Mr. Yen's laundry. Do you mind? You prefer the laundry to the church? Well, I have a special reason. Is it all right? Oh, yes, I suppose so. They do say that cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Trudy, as long as you've given others the fun of helping, can't I do something? Uh, how about some flowers, huh? Are you going to pay for them with that? No, no, we've got some flowers in the church. <laughs> well, thank you, but we don't need any. Mr. Kelly's bringing the flowers. I don't care what you say, Trudy. It's, it's impossible, right? No one can find flowers at this time of night. Well, go on, stare. I don't care. I haven't played this for years, but Trudy wished for music, so I offered to play. Well, it has a beautiful tone. There's an ancient saying to the effect that once a man learns to make music, he never forgets. The ancient saying is wrong. Well, we sometimes question the wisdom of the ancients when we ourselves are at fault. I shall try again. How does it look? Oh, now everything is perfect. Mr. Tuttle, don't you think we ought to have a rehearsal? Or shouldn't we wait for the bridegroom? Oh, he won't need a rehearsal. He does everything so wonderfully. Well, of course. Dick, he's here. Oh, Mr. Kelly. Aren't they all right? Oh, they're, they're beautiful. Two punches. I thought you could carry one. Put the other up for decorations. Oh, I'll, I'll put one on the altar. I'll get some water. So he didn't show up. 
Mr. Tuttle, will you please tell Mr. Kelly what to do? If you're about to rehearse. What for? I'm sorry you got dragged into this, Mr. Mr. Tuttle. Mr. Kelly, please keep quiet. He'll be here. Five bucks, Mr. Yen. Excuse me. Mr. Tuttle, do you have any money you could loan to me? I'm sorry, Mr. Yen. All I have is this, and, and you Thank know how you I Thank you very got... much. I'll pay you back. Make that ten dollars, Mr. Kelly. Your Honor, you can't bet that money. I know you don't approve of betting, but this is a matter of principle. I give my winnings to the church. Yes. I'll give all of it to the church, and you hold the stakes, Mr. Tuttle. There. The church benefits each way. Now, that makes it right. Well, I... What's that all to... about? Well, these gentlemen have just made a very generous contribution to the church. Oh, you see, you got your wish. Remember? Now, about the wedding, I'll meet Dick outside and we'll walk together down the aisle. Is that all right? Well, ordinarily, Mr. Yen would walk in with you, Trudy. I'd be busy with the music, Mr. Tuttle. That's true. Very well, we can do it your way, Trudy. Oh, good. And don't forget, Mr. Yen, when the ceremony starts, you're to stand beside me. Uh, do you have the ring, Mr. Kelly? Ring? Huh. I don't know where I'd get one at this hour, but I'll try. Oh, you don't have to. Dick will bring the ring. And a beautiful engagement ring, too. Yeah. Shh. There. Well, are we ready? Oh, wait. I, I want to start outside. Uh. The music, Mr. Yen. Strange that a big clock like that should be fast, isn't it? Mr. Tuttle, what time do you have? I guess I'll have to have mine fixed, too. It's about time someone faced the facts around here. Trudy, it is 11 o'clock. Oh, but it can't be. When it's really 11, Dick will be here. But he might have been delayed, Mr. Kelly. You were supposed to find out the truth, did you? Well? Mr. Kelly, I don't understand. Trudy, I... I hate to tell you this, but you better listen to me. <coughs> Serious thing I ever did in my life. I don't know why I did it. But you ruined my sleep anyway. Well, don't just stand there. What shall I do with it? Put it down here. See, I I've got a special table for it. Mr. Beltheimer, you don't know how happy we are to see you. Serious thing I ever did in my life. We hope you can stay for the wedding. Trudy, put an other place at the table. Oh, but I've already set a place for Mr. Bertheimer. Now, all we have to do is wait for 11 o'clock and Dick will be here. Trudy, it's now 11.30. Dick must have made a mistake in the time. He never makes a mistake, sir. But there are so many explanations, delays, misconnections. Now that we've everything ready, we can have the wedding tomorrow. Or any time. Well, why put it off? Does it matter if we made a few minutes? You don't mind, do you? Now, look, Trudy, we don't blame you for wishing. It's just that you wish for too much, that's all. Well, I know I've asked you to do a lot of things, but you've had fun, and it's not as if I wanted it all for myself. I wanted everything to be perfect for Dick. Trudy, you don't see what's before your eyes because you don't want to see things as they are. Do you call this perfect? Isn't it? Oh, what kind of a wedding would this be, Trudy? If you'll pardon me, Mr. Yen, this is just a little neighborhood laundry with some sheets hanging up. And I found those flowers in it, in a garden. But all flowers come out of a garden. And I think the room looks lovely and all my best friends are here. We'll always be your friends. Nothing can change that. Oh, sure we will, then. And Trudy, we're not blaming you for what's happened here tonight. I guess our wishes are just as silly as yours are. Now, look at me. I'm always wishing that I could capture the world's most dangerous criminal. Do something very important. And Mr. Yen there, well, he always wishes he had a family. All his ancestors had families, and he thinks he's disgraced them. 
and Mr. Belsheimer. I guess all he wishes for is to sleep. And the Reverend Tuttle, uh, he just wishes that people were better than they are. Oh, but that's just it, Mr. Kelly. Don't you see? What's it? Well, you're all getting your wishes just as I am. Oh, you wanted to do something important. Well, just think what you're helping start tonight. After Dick and I are married, well, we'll have children and they'll have children and there'll be whole generations of important people just because of you tonight. And that's the family Mr. Yen wanted, isn't it, Mr. Yen? And Mr. Beltheimer. He did something for somebody else, for free. <laughs> and probably for the first time. I bet he's having the most peaceful sleep of all. And, Mr. Tuttle, did you ever see better people than these? No, Trudy. You see, Mr. Kelly? Yeah, Trudy, but, but about this guy? Yeah, I guess so. The only thing I regret is that I can't do more for Dick. It would have been fun, but then you can't have everything. You could help him to get places on time. Yes, I could do that. I wish that he comes right away. What's that? A taxi? I didn't hear anything. Did you, Mr. Tuttle? Yes, it is. It's Dick. Oh, Mr. Beltheimer, wake up. Huh? What? Oh, the wedding. What Please, is sorry. the matter? Oh, and Mr. Yen, would you start the music? And, and Mr. Kelly, would you like the candles, the please? Candles. Oh. But Trudy, there is nobody there. Shh. Listen. wasn't important. The music, Mr. Yen. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Wilt thou take this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live with in God's ordinance, 